Welcome to CEO Interviews, a production of GORCOM in which we take the time to speak with small cap executives about recent developments at their companies. With us today, I'm really happy to have for the first time ever, Jean-Marc Lacoste. He's president and CEO of Monarch Gold, trades on the TSX Venture Exchange under the stock symbol MQR, and for our friends in Germany on the Frankfurt Exchange under MR7. Now, for those of you who are new to the story, and that's got to be a lot of you uh, for this first time, the company's flagship Quinar Gold Mine has great potential to become a producer. It's 100% owned and it's at the pre-feasibility stage as we speak. The company is well financed, including $9 million in credits from the Quebec government. And the company recently acquired a 750 ton per day mill, the Beacon Mill. Here to talk about all that is John Mark. Welcome to the show. Hi, George. I'm glad to be here. I'm happy to be uh, doing my first interview with you. Well, we're happy to have you on because you've got some great things happening and the small cap world needs to know about it. So let's get straight to the meat of the company. Your flagship project, the Quinar, the Quinar Gold Project, has great potential to become a producer. Discuss with everyone how close that is and what's next for Quinar. Well, the first and foremost thing you should know about Quinar, it is a fully permitted mine. Let me repeat, fully permitted. In Quebec, it would take about 24 to 36 months to get a permit going to do mining. We were fortunate enough to have all the permits in place in the last three years. And this is one of the major factors. It's not only important that you have gold, but it's important that you have the permits to take it out from the ground. So this is the good thing about the Quadar Gold Project. Not only has close to 300,000 ounces of uh, all categories uh, of, uh, of gold, but it also has all the permits. That means should we get the money, which is not much more than what we have right now, we can start the whole project without having to go back to the government and ask for permits. It's all in place. So what's next? Are you, are you willing to move ahead uh, soon on Quinar, or you mentioned that you want to raise some more money in order to get it going. If you do raise that money, what does the timeline look like to get to any kind of production, potentially? Well, the good news is right now we have 10 million in the bank. Uh, the money was raised over uh, the last year. Uh, we sat very uh, comfortably with the money, not spending it at different places. So right now what we have is a good treasury uh, we also have, uh, we were able to secure a $3 million grant from the provincial government of Quebec in order to build a power line. Now, on the original scenario of 2004, the pre feasibility, we needed $25 million to get the whole project started. And since then, we were able to get that $3 million from the government, which is not part of the current $10 million we have in the bank. Right. So roughly, we're sitting on potentially $13 million towards the project. So we're only missing 12. Now, we don't want to go and raise money right this second as we're making more and more significant discovery with the gold bug uh, showing, which uh, maybe I should talk to people about the gold bug showing quickly. It's basically a new discovery that was made 500 meters from the current deposit. So for those fellow Americans out there, 500 meters is roughly uh, three, uh, you know, what, three to 500 feet from, uh, from the main mine as we that we're actually considering and putting in production. Now, we want to make sure we understand fully what we have in our hands before we start the whole process because we believe that there's a lot more to show on the on the project that we, we think. And we know that the main deposit quadar, once it starts going, it's going to supply us with sufficient cash flow to explore the 150 square kilometers or 58 square miles of property that is the Quadar deposit. So talk to us then, is that, the, is that the strategic reason behind the acquisition of the 750 ton per day uh, Beacon Mill? Well, the, the main idea, you want to talk about the mill? The Beacon Mill is fully permitted. Yes, I repeat again, fully permitted. It takes five years in Quebec to get a mill permitted. So when everybody was hiding under their desk in 2015, 16, because of the bear market was never finishing, we turned around and we said, we got to grab that mill. We got that mill for less than $5 million. The rebuild value of that mill is close to 25 to $35 million. With all the permits in place, we would have been stupid not to pick it up. 
So now the, the good thing about all this, what it does to Monarch, is it gives us the control of our future. When we did the pre in 2014, one of the aspects of the project, we had to ask around to different mills, what was the cost of milling, uh, could they get us through their mill, and everybody was saying, well, we're not sure, we'll see where you are in due time, maybe later. What that created in me was a, this sort of insecurity, thinking, wait a minute, if gold starts going up 100 bucks a month for a couple of months in a row, what do you think is going to happen to the availability of gold out there? Everybody's going to turn around and say, hey, wait a minute, I'm going to scratch some rocks on my land, I'm not going to let you go through. So we started thinking this acquisition of the Beacon Mill was not only strategic, but it was a must for Monarch to control its own destiny. So now the beauty of this Beacon Mill not only puts us ready to go with our own future in our hands with the control of milling, but it also opens us to a lot more potential with either acquisition to fill in the mill. Because we believe the Quanar deposit, as we know it, will fill roughly 80% of the mill, and we could actually count on either Gold Bug or other projects in the area to make sure we go uh, full, fully functional on the mill. Jean-Marc, uh, you've mentioned Gold Bug a couple of times. Uh, what's the significance of Gold Bug? And tell us about the, the results that you released today specifically. Were they a surprise to you, a, a great surprise, or is it as expected and you're, and you're expecting a lot of things out of Gold Bug? Well, there's nothing, there's never anything expected with Gold Bug right now. We, we like the name, we give it to it, and it keeps on giving us back some results. So we're really happy with this. Again, this thing uh, showing is near surface. So the, we want to talk about today's discovery. We're talking about a 17 grams over roughly 20 feet long, and it sits within a 15 meter envelope at 7 grams if you include uh, that high grade zone. So what we're looking at is a lot, and, and this sits only 20 meters from the surface. Now, uh, we announced in January a 25 meter zone at 8 grams, so we're slowly starting to understand the shape and form of, of what we're looking at right now, but we, there's so much more drilling that has to be done in that area, and the good news, it sits right by the mine, so we can still work at it while we put the mine in production, and we believe that this alone could bring a lot a different uh, spin on the story of Quanar, because the Quanar deposit, as we know it, is a intrusive rock in a granodiorite where you have veins and that contain the gold. When you look at gold bug, it's in a disseminated envelope uh, where you get a lot of one, two gram material, including that big zone that we discovered, so which makes it a lot different to look at and a potentially much uh, you know, I, I wouldn't say much more tonnage at this time, but because we don't, we barely know. Uh, we only did the roughly uh, 3,000 meters of drilling in the last uh, couple of years on that on that showing. So the good news is we're going at it a lot right now, and we believe it's a different type of beast. And like uh, Rob McEwen told me, uh, one of our major shareholder, for those of you who follow the story, Rob McEwen told me once, uh, Jean Marc, I like the Quanar deposit, but what I like about it is it could be the tip of something huge because you're all by yourself in this 150 square kilometer land. And uh, the only thing you know is the tip with 300,000 ounces of high grade. Nothing was done. No work was done uh, on the exploration level outside that deposit. So this is what uh, got him excited, all the blue sky and the potential of uh, the exploration. So Gold Bug is just the best example. It's a, a rock throw away from... Uh, from the main deposit. Imagine we haven't started the 150 square kilometers yet. That's pretty great things going over there. Um, and you've got some, because you mentioned Rob McEwen, I want to talk about some big names. You've got some, you know, we know that you're well financed from what you've got in the bank. You've got some great shareholders behind, behind you. Tell us about your major shareholders. Well, we, between five people, Rob McEwen, Greg Shemeni, the past the chairman of Richemont Mines, uh, Namaska Lithium, myself, between the four of us, we're closing in on 40% of the company. So between four individuals uh, controlling the company uh, up to 40%, and if you had, let's say, five to ten more shareholders, we're up to about 75-80%. So the company is very tightly held. And I believe this is one of the main things, if you want to have a success in the mining world, especially in the junior world as you make discovery, you need to have a good control over your flow. 
for your first interview here in Agoracom, uh, you hit it out of the park. You've just got you got a fantastic project uh, in Quinar. You've got Goldbug that uh, is got a lot of upside potential there as well as Quinar. Big money in the bank. Great shareholders behind you. This is why we're so happy to welcome you to to Agoracom. You're one of the best uh, juniors we've seen out there. Uh, and yet almost undiscovered, almost it seems like. So we're looking forward to having you back quite often uh, over the next 12 months to talk more in detail about your developments. But thanks so much for joining us today because this has been one great education on Monarch's Gold. Well, thank you so much, George, and I'll be there. And as many questions as you have, I'll be able to answer it, and I'll be happy to do so. Uh, you've been watching Jean-Marc Lacoste. He's President and CEO of Monarch's Gold. The company trades on the TSX Venture Exchange on the stock symbol MQR and for our friends in Germany on the stock symbol MR7. Do your due diligence, put Monarchs on your watch list, re-watch this interview again because as you, as you just watched, Jean-Marc had some great things to say, great people behind this company. Watch this company for, uh, for the next 12 months to come and beyond. Have a great day, everyone. Talk to you soon.